In this audio recording, I'm giving two illustrations to point out something I've been teaching before that maybe you haven't noticed or maybe you've forgotten. Okay, um, let's go to Austria and let's go to the federal state of Carinthia. Just for illustration's sake, okay, there's a private investigator there has been authorized by the Austrian state and also by the federal, federal state of Carinthia to conduct criminal investigations on behalf of clients. Let's call this man Sven. Sven was approached by a young woman of 23 years old. She was a businesswoman, she had a small business, she had two employees, and she had clients often. This young woman approached Sven and told him, I want you to investigate and find out who killed my father. And the woman tells him, I'm 23 now. When I was, when I was um, four years old, my father was brutally killed. I would like you to find out what happened to my father. Because, look, my mother is still depressed of what happened, even though she married later with another guy who has been a great stepdad onto me. It was still traumatic for me to hear that my father had been killed at such a young age. Till now, I still feel some consequences mentally because I was shocked as a kid. So I want you to figure out what happened to my father. And... Sven, the private investigator, goes right into the case. He receives a f uh, the cold case reports from the municipality and begins to speak with former suspects. He even speaks to with the parents and he speaks with, well, some of the former classmates of that went to kindergarten with the victim. Now, who was the victim? The victim was a guy named Adolf Adolf was 22 years old, he was engaged, he had his own apartment, and he was a gardener. So he didn't earn that much money, but good enough to survive financially. Adolf was not involved in the criminal world. Adolf had just a few friends he contacted, which were four. And Adolf was never or seldom in a bad daylight. He had good grades at school. He always was very polite to teachers and to strangers. And even at his former job, people were happy with him because he was a hard worker. He never complained and he worked over hours. So Sven was thinking, who would want to kill this guy? Sven was just a beginner in private investigation. And this was the second homicide case he did. The first homicide case was easily solved. It was obvious who had the motive. But in this case, it was quite difficult because all the people he interviewed briefly, they had nothing bad to say about Adolf. But still he was killed. He was shot down in cold blood. And Sven also realized that the police investigation towards his case was quite slow. And they closed down the investigation after just eight months just quite quickly and Adolf no no no, no for, forgive me I mean Sven was realizing or he realized at that moment that hold on a minute it is as if people wanted to cover up something here so Sven went through all the evidence again and he just he couldn't figure it out so Sven went to his wife Sven was married. His wife was a teacher at high school. She taught French. So the wife looks into the files. And the wife notices things that her husband didn't notice. That's why if you have a job that's like this, I advise you that to have a partner who's also willingly to assist you in your job because it may help you okay but besides that 
So the wife looks at the files and she begins to think, hold on a minute, Sven, honey, have you talked to the grandparents of this uh, victim? And Sven says, one of them is alive, the grandfather, and he's in his 90s now. Um, the wife told him, go talk to that man. Why? Sven asked. Just trust me, Sven, the wife said, talk to that grandfather. So Sven listened to his wife and he contacted the grand grandfather of that, of the crime victim. So when he spoke to the grandfather, whose name was also Adolf, let's call him Adolf Sr. Adolf Sr. was not interrogated by the police back then. He was completely out of the picture. But when Sven looked into the history of this Adolf Sr., Sven realized that Adolf Sr. used to be a hothead in his young years. He was often arrested for felonies and for breaking in. So he was a criminal in his young years. Later on he married, he had, had kids. But here's the, here's the big deal. Adolf Sr. was abandoned by his dad when he was two years old. His mom went into prostitution in order to survive. So at a young age, Adolf Sr. was trapped into criminal activities though to his stepfathers because his mother used to change partners often. And because his mother had such a bad reputation, the people around became to speak negative about Adolf Sr. Adolf Sr. had a lot of bad attention while growing up. And even though it's not an excuse, but this was the anger he acted out in his felonies, in his criminal activities. He never killed anyone, neither did he went after weak people. Now, when he settled down and had kids, the people in the past that used to talk bad about him, though to the I would say the reputation of his mother they didn't want to let go of their opinion how and the decisions they made concerning Adolf senior because they knew very well that they didn't treat him right that the way they thought about him was completely wrong they used their, his criminal past as an excuse for how they were treating him so those people also had ch children and those children heard the stories about Adolf senior and they began to hate Adolf senior out of loyalty to their parents and they also began to speak negatively up, up on Adolf Sr. Now, Adolf Sr.'s father uh, was too embarrassed because he left his wife, so he didn't want to see his son. But Adolf Sr. didn't even care about it, he just moved on. And Adolf Sr.'s father later died, though to, well, he drank too much. He went and um, he kind of, he walked in front of a car and he got killed. Now, Adolf Sr. didn't even want to go to the funeral. He just moved on with living. But here's the thing. All that negativity that was uttered against Adolf Sr. caused a lot of psychic attacks upon Adolf Sr. and his, and his family. So, when one of Adolf Sr.'s sons had a, had a child, one, that son of Adolf Sr. decided, I'm going to move to another town because I don't want to remain in this climate of contention. And he did. But even there, the psych attacks continued. And um, this grandson who was called Adolf Jr. He realized that his relatives often well, were the target of that, um, I would say, it, bad, bad attention. He also had people around him treating him poorly and he couldn't understand why. And Adolf Jr. never accepted it. He never took it when people so-called didn't like him and they had the reasons for it. One day, Adolf Jr. went to a, a fortune teller. And as I mentioned before, you should never go to fortune tellers. 
In this case, Adolf Jr. didn't knew any better. Adolf Jr. went to a fortune teller. And the fortune teller revealed onto Adolf Jr. that your grandfather used to be hated by people around him because people didn't like his mother. His mother, which is her great grandmother, used to be very emotionally addictive and she used to be very, very, she used to be emotionally very quickly and people hated it that when she married, her husband left her, she became a prostitute and people came to, the hatred people had against her began to project it onto your grandfather also. And those people had children and throughout generations it went on. And there are, that, that, that tension that was this upon your family is causing people around to dislike you people. And those people that dislike you, they also realize that they've done wrong, but they don't want, they, they don't want to revoke their decision to not like you people. So they keep defending their right to not like you, to be negative towards you. And the first child told them, you can solve this if you do such such ritual. Now, when Adolf Jr. figured out what what was going on, Adolf Jr. realized those people that didn't like him because they sensed a bad tension around him, they were responsible for, for contributing to that bad tension with them, their choice not to like him without any reason. So Adolf Jr. did not excuse them. So Adolf Jr. wanted the situation to be resolved at all costs because he didn't want to have things to haunt, having things haunting him, like did his father and grandfather. Because he saw how it ruined their financial lives and their relationships. So, Adolf Jr. pays the money to the fortune teller. The fortune teller performs the pagan ritual. And after that, at this time, Adolf Jr. was only 14 years old. Things changed. Suddenly, Adolf Jr. had new friends out of other towns. He also met at age 15, an attractive young woman of 16 with whom he got involved with. Adolf Jr. even began his own small business when he was finishing high school. He didn't even went to college because his business became so successful. So things were going on, things were going on. In the sense that things were getting ahead, had success. And for years, Man, it seemed as if, well, the past was the past. It's never going to come back. But here's the big catch. The relatives of this Adolf Jr., I mean his father and mother and also his grandparents, they were happy for Adolf Jr. because Adolf Jr. would often um, donate money to them freely because they are his relatives. Now, this was something very special because often the first people to come after you are jealous relatives. But in this case, because, well, the, this, the family circle of Adolf Jr. was so small, just his, mom, just his parents, his uncles, and his grandparents, very small, they supported him. But the other relatives who were not in contact with them, they became upset. Also, the descendants of the people that hate of the child, people that hated um, Adolf Sr., they became upset too. And the people that also disliked Adolf Jr., both adults and their children and their friends, they also became upset because look at what happened. Because Adolf Jr. now was freed from that stigma, that paranormal stigma that was placed upon him by collective resentment, all the resentment people had towards him could not flow to him anymore. So people start noticing things going wrong in their lives, in their finances. People got mental issues and all of that. So what happened? And now here's another thing. That Adolf Jr. whom they spoken bad about, he had his own business, he had his daughter, had a beautiful woman living with his own apartment. And so, and people were, and this made those people feel bad. They didn't want to, as a match for, they didn't want to revoke their decision. They didn't want to repent and, and acknowledge they've contributed harm to someone else. So people began to hate 
Adolf Jr. the more because he was delivered from that paranormal stigma. But here's a catch. That deliverance was not real deliv deliverance. It was false deliverance. That stigma was gone. But Adolf Jr. himself was not born again. He did not follow Christ, so he wasn't truly delivered. It was that stigma he was delivered from. That was off of him. But those dark clouds that were generated by those resentful people were, were still there. And after a several years, the charm that was generated at that ceremony faded away. It worked out in a sense that it didn't, it expired. So when it expired, that stigma did not return onto Adolf Jr. But the paranormal shield he had around him that kept all that bad energy and all those bad people at a distance was gone. So Adolf Jr. lost his business and he had to go work at, as a gardener. He didn't mind. So one day there was this group of young men that they were feeling bad. They were feeling devalidated because Adam Jr. had such an easy life and they had to work hard. So those young men one day hired um, Adolf Jr. as a gardener to garden a garden and while he was gardening they shot him. Now Sven later found out that there were people against um, uh, Adolf Jr. and he even when he looked when he know, knew more about the family background now we notice that there were suspects that were released but should have been released. So Sven, when Sven looked careful at it, he realized who the killers were. He gave, he reported it to the municipality and the municipality accrued this evidence and those men were arrested. They were all in their 40s, approaching 50s now. And they were arrested for the murder on Adolf Jr. So the daughter of Adolf Jr. was relieved and she could finally close up the chapter. Now, I'm going to give another illustration. This illustration was a bit long. I made it detailed so that you guys would learn to look at the bigger picture. Okay, so let's continue. Here you have... A young girl, let's call her her Deborah. Deborah has suffered mental illness since she was a kid, and she would be often hyper, and she had to take medicine from a young age. She had difficulty um, finishing high school. She had difficulty in relationships. She had all kinds of difficulties. One day, Deborah encounters. A young man which would become her husband and um, well they date for only two weeks and then the then boyfriend decides let's get married and they married uh, on holiday it wasn't a big ceremony or anything because the poor didn't want to have much con uh, attention to it so but they get married legally and they returned now when the husband then met the relatives of his wife, but he felt quite uncomfortable with his family-in-law. And he realized that some of the nieces, some of the female relatives of um, his wife looked dirty at him. He sensed the animosity coming, dropping out, uh, streaming out of them towards him. Well, since the boy was married to her husband, let's call her husband James, she, she has been married to James, she didn't have any um, of those psych psychological issues anymore. 
even her psychiatrist thought it was it was quite odd but her psychiatrist was happy that she was relieved from all those all that distress so james sensed that something was up so james began to ask his wife about her childhood and all and how people treated her and then he noticed that his wife had all kinds of empty space in her memory this thing a lot sometimes she couldn't even remember years of her life in her of her early teens and james became alarmed by this one day when james was in prayer james was contacted by the son of a cousin of his wife so the cousin of his wife had a son and that son contacted them um, contacted uh, james and they, des they decided to meet and this son who was only in his teens told james james i'm glad you married um my aunt i wasn't really his aunt but okay he, he called her aunt that you married aunt deborah but please sir stay away from my relatives and then james asked him dude i'm i'm calling you dude as if you're the same age here dude you realize that what you're saying now is very negative and the guy said trust me that's why i want to speak to you in private i didn't want to speak with you through the phone stay away from my relatives i do the same thing and then james asked them why then the guy says to him james when you met us several about about two about a year ago didn't you know this as some of us looked at you very dirty and james was shocked and the guy said i see you're shocked yes i saw it did, did you think that you need to get out of there james said yeah i thought about about you know this are my family-in-law i need to the guy told them james these people here are effed up in their mind i'm not listen subscribes not using the f word here but i said f just as you guys will know what the guy said the, the guy said listen my relatives are effed up in their head they are very in very embittered people and that your wife when she when her mother was pregnant the father doubted whether or not it was his child why because the woman had an affair before and um my and the mother of your wife used to be resentful towards her daughter and more people were resentful people began to talk in town and all, all of that after the child was born they well it was obvious that it was the child of the her husband but still the resentment was still there and deborah became the target of that um that dissatisfaction as a child people often screamed at her blamed her for things she couldn't do they often act crazy and as lunatics towards her while she was growing up and she developed all these psychological issues people just sent her to, to a psychologist because they didn't want to reveal that they were the ones that caused it and during her high school time the other pupils just act out against her they didn't really mean harm but they didn't know how to deal with her and people began to blame the victim in this case the bora for how the relatives were treating her because of because the relatives didn't want to solve their own inner conflicts. So after a while, Deborah found out about the hatred of her relatives towards her. She couldn't handle it. She got depressed, also suicidal for a while. And it was shortly after that that she met you. Why? Because people were cursing her, telling her that she would never get married. No man would ever want her. There was uh, nobody, nobody wanted someone insane and stupid as her. 
But when she got married, they were shocked. They realized that something had been broken. And the boar is quite happy with you, while they still have all that negativity to carry with them. So I'm telling you, James, I don't know you personally. We just met for the first time. I'm telling you, take your wife away and don't contact us anymore. These people are going to bring harm to your marriage and they may even take out their rage against you. And I don't know. Well, look, the boar is happy with you, but she's still not fully healed of what has been done onto her. So the chance that she will fall back into the traps of his her relatives is big. And if it happens, my relatives may use her as a pawn to harm you. And if you have kids together, oh dear, the whole cycle will continue with those kids. This guy that talked to James was a believer. And he has spiritual insight and he saw clearly what was going on. So James listened to what this young man was saying. And he and his wife broke all contact. And they might even migrated to another town. Shortly after that, that guy also moved away. Now, okay, that was the second illustration. In these both illustrations, you had someone that was targeted from birth, due to collective resentment around him or around her. They couldn't help that they became a target. The people around them contributed and they complied with the collective witchcraft was going on. Some unaware, others aware, because they knew they shouldn't treat those people that way, but it kept on going because people didn't want to give up their rights to will what they want to will. They wanted to have, they, their idea was they made a choice, how they think, how they feel, and they, they just how they think, they're honest. They didn't want to repent and give up. In the first case, that guy sought help, but the help he received was from the paranormal. So it wasn't really help at all. There, the paranormal stigma was removed from him, so that was a deliverance, kind of, but it wasn't real de de deliverance in the long run, because the guy wasn't born again, and now he was dependent upon demonic protection. He had relief that was assisted by demons. And when that assistance worked out, when that assistance, um, how do I say it, faded away, all the rage had access towards him and he got killed. He was assassinated. He was murdered. In the second case, that Deborah was falling apart and she got relief by finding a husband and things were getting better with her. But the fact she was married now with, with the husband angered her relatives and they were out for revenge. So that believer who was separated by the Lord from his own relatives saw what was going on with Deborah and her husband. So he warns the husband to stay away from those people. And he did. Now, what am I trying to say with these two illustrations? Your deliverance will have implications for your environment. No, now I'm addressing believers here. When I talk about true deliverance. In these two examples, there was no true deliverance. The so-called deliverance with Adolf Jr. was relief. When you look at it uh, uh, on the long term. But it was not deliverance, it was short-lived. With the second, there was also relief. But, well, it, it, there was still no definite solution over there. But he, but in those these two examples I've given you, there was just relief, but relief also had implications for the environment. Those were implications that people did not want to face. It comes down to this: people did not want the people wanted to be left alone. They didn't like Adolf Jr. for some reason, and they just wanted to leave it at that. Well, we just don't like him. Well, it was 
hurtful for him that people not liking but yeah that's how we think no no they didn't want to take their responsibility for what they were contributing to they did not want to be held accountable they didn't want to be told they had to repent they didn't want that so they wanted to have an excuse to keep on hating on Adolf Jr. to feel good about himself. And if and they would always say they have their reasons, and they always will say it's their private life, it's their decision, what they want, blah, blah, blah. All those worldly excuses do not repent. When Adolf Jr. got relief, and relief had, had consequences for those people that contributed to the intoxication that Adolf, Adolf Jr. was relieved from, those people were... The frustration, the fact that their will was frustrated, angered them so much that some of them became so desperate that they murdered him. In the second example I've given, people were about to kill the husband. It was divine intervention that caused that believer to, to make the dead husband and that wife depart. So that bad stuff wouldn't have happened. Now that's only relief. Worldly people that get relieved, well, that relief often has. I would say that relief is often met with retaliation, and that's just the world. So how much more retaliation do you think that a believer will have when he or she is delivered? Look, when you have your deliverance, you need to learn to look at the bigger picture and think in line with the bigger picture. Because in this story, that Adolf Jr., okay, even if the ritual at the, at the foreshadow worked, he should have looked at the bigger picture. He should have realized, okay, if I went through all this hardship in my lifetime because people just didn't want to give up their will. Then something needs to be done against those people also, spiritually. But he didn't look that far. He was so focused on getting relief. And the, clair the clairvoyant say the force teller did assist them in getting paranormal relief. But it was only relief. Okay? And because of that, things returned later. But when he returned, it returned more powerful than before, and he literally died. And he left a daughter behind, who was, we grew up, partially traumatized because her father was killed when she was four years old. So, look, when you are delivered and are walking by faith, expect retaliation, expect resistance. Expect that people are going to defend their attitude of compliance. Why? Because look, even if um, this Adolf Jr. I'm talking about in this uh, in these uh, parables I give you, even if he had that attitude and people didn't like that, their dislike is still a contribution in the negative. It's still a negative meditation. So even if apart from the generational curse that was upon him, the other people that choose to think bad about Adolf Jr., they still contribute to the negative. So they still need to repent. And some people just, they never want to evaluate way of thinking. They just want to be left alone. And that mentality is right. It's already a bad mentality. Why? Because if your way of thinking that you want to be left alone is contributing to harm, then you're going to excuse this also. Anyway, what I wanted to point out to you is that when you are delivered, it's then that the real battle begins. Some people, it's when you are delivered and things are working out for the good, it's then they will show up in your life again. Because they're upset because things are going well with you because that means that the way they think about you has to change. If you used to be a crackhead, smoking crack, all day long, and people were expecting you to die soon of an overdoses. They had all these bad things were talking about you, and now you are a businessman with your own business. You bought your own house, and those people were talking bad about you. They still have their mortgage you need to pay off. They haven't moved further. They're just 
trapped in their um how say trapped in their own social in their own um comfort zone do you think those people want you to be in such a condition why because all the new people that will meet you will see you in a good condition and when they hear about your past that you were used to be addicted to crack and how you got over those people are going to think okay what about his relatives what about the people he hang out with why didn't anyone else help him why didn't to... and those people don't want that to happen because it will put them in a bad daylight because they contributed to the troubles you were going through by being negative towards you but being neglecting towards you. They don't want that to happen. So you will have people that become upset when you are delivered and they will show up in your life. I, or they may not show up themselves, but they may have a compliance. Let's say one of them has a relationship with a guy and they will let the guy show up at, at your life because they will lie to the guy about a lot of stuff you did onto them that you didn't do. And the guy will come upset with you and the guy will agree with his lover to assault you so you may have people that you just pop up in your life with a smell but they're really agents and sometimes people will come at you to talk about you about stuff not because they really have an interest what's going on it's because there was there's contention behind the scenes and they want to and they are part of that contention okay let me give you a, uh, a short example there were people i knew that began to ask me what was going on uh, they will ask about certain events and I will tell them what happened and later they will tell me well because such just people are murmuring about you blah 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 And my thinking was okay if they're murmuring behind my back Why are you informing me about the situation then? Are you informing me to go and talk about the situation with them? Are you so you're part of the contention? You will have such people also that will appear in your life sometimes out of the blue So have discernment. I'm not making this recording to cause you to be suspicious, superstitious and all that. No, I want you to be alert, especially if you have children or people that fall under your care. Listen, when you are delivered and now you're growing in righteousness, it's then that the real fight begins. And it's then that you will see how desperate some people are. And how far they're willing to go to defend their self-validation. Okay, that's all for now. This video has been quite long. I know that, but I needed to make this these long illustrations just to reveal unto you that it's important to look at the bigger picture and to act in line with the bigger picture. All right. That's why Jesus said, speak to the mountain. He did not say, speak to the tree or speak to the little rock. He said, speak to the mountain. That means you need to be aware of the bigger picture. That being said, be at peace.